I started to think of God as this cruel, jealous God. I thought of him as like trying to humiliate me, just like take away this thing in the worst way possible. Tanner, we were talking a little bit beforehand and, and you told me a little bit about your life. You got some interesting aspects. You got surfing, acting, baseball. Now you're working in campus ministry at a, a, a college campus. Tell me a little bit about how you got into all of those different things. Uh, grew up acting, like I loved comedy, loved Jim Carrey. I sent him a letter when I was little saying how much I loved him. And he sent me back a signed headshot saying, thank you very much, Jim Carrey. <laughs> After playing college baseball and Got to be in a, a college baseball comedy, so it was like kind of this mm. full circle, all my worlds kind of colliding. Ultimately, at the end of the day, like all that stuff is fun, but there's still like a, a restlessness. And, and that, I, I found that like in my faith again. And How were you able to kind of handle or juggle high school baseball and high school sports uh, with where your faith was at the time? I was going through like, Jesuit formation while playing baseball. So I was like following this kind of like really rigid lifestyle while playing baseball and I like the, the worlds kind of collided. Like I felt like if I messed up sinning, then like God would take away my baseball abilities. Or, you know, if I didn't like sign of the cross before like the next pitch, then I would like strike out. Like just kind of superstitious almost mm -hmm. with my faith because mm -hmm. it wasn't rooted in anything real. Uh, something happened to you in baseball while you were in college that really affected um, your idea of who you were. What happened when you were playing baseball in college? I was part of a new Division I program. This program had never had freshmen before, so as like the first freshman in it, I got some pretty intense bullying from the upperclassmen. And after I transferred out, they apologized, saying that they, they tried to break me. And, and they did break me. What was some of that bullying? What would they do? For example, throwing to first base, the first baseman would be right there. And unless I hit his glove perfectly, he would just watch it go by. Even if I missed by a foot, he would just... So he, he, he was just doing nothing, making you look bad in front of the coaches? Just intentionally making me know that I didn't make a perfect throw. I ended up transferring out. I had developed the yips. The yips is when you forget how to do something that is just natural and you've always done. For me at shortstop, I just couldn't make the throw back to first base. Which is pretty uh, important. Which is, yeah, if you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you can't make the play, then you can't play. It was just the this thing I was so good at that a lot of my identity was wrapped in, all of a sudden just like was gone. And like, when you can't do this simple thing, you feel like, can you even do anything? I already felt like I was walking a tightrope with God, so I was like, I can't even live life. I can't even do the simple things. Mm -hmm. And if I can't do that, then like, wh what can I really do? How did it begin to affect your, your faith life? A lot of my identity and a lot of my aspirations, a lot of my prayer was centered around baseball. I started to think of God as this cruel, jealous God who like knew that like I loved this. I thought of him as like trying to humiliate me, just like take away this thing in the worst way possible. After I transferred, I did find a, a little pamphlet for like free therapy. Mm -hmm. And I found that like my scrupulosity and my like yips were tied to like a severe OCD. I was diagnosed with severe OCD and like severe anxiety. And I think severe depression. I think I was, I was diagnosed like, a, I got the, the, the trifecta there, the holy trinity of mental health. <laughs> <laughs> what type of things do you think you needed help with uh, outside of, of baseball? Well, I think I needed a clear vision of like who the father is. Just to know like I'm loved, especially being bullied by like people I, I kind of admired. I needed to like have fellowship. After I left baseball, found a group of college students at my next school who just like really loved Jesus and like were on fire. I felt like they were like trying to live it out and, and just being able to like not be the only one chasing this faith by myself. But then I, I booked a comedy like a, a, about a baseball team that shot me out to LA. And so what happened when you were in, in LA with your, your faith life? Were you able to, to find another group of friends that were able to keep you close or? Um, praise God, I had my best friend out there because without him, I would have been totally a goner. And I think he would say the same thing, but we like push each other to like be men and just like keep going after it, even if it's just us. Mm -hmm. 
What is your image of the father now? I think now he is truly a father who desires to give. I love the verse of like, even sinners know how to give good gifts. Like who would ask for a loaf of bread and give a snake? If I ask for a loaf of bread, he's gonna give me like, the, he's gonna try and give me the raddest loaf of sourdough <laughs> that there is. I, I view him much more as like a good father. One of the most important things in our faith life is our image of God the Father. And I think a lot of us have the mistaken origin of our image of God the Father. Instead of allowing God the Father to reveal himself to us, we take our broken images of fatherhood in our own life and project that onto God. And that's one of the biggest transitions we need to make in our life. And, and it's one that I think Tanner has been able to make. Taking our image of God from God himself not from our broken experiences of people in sin, but from God himself, allowing him to reveal his true self to us.